Hey guys, welcome back. Let's get into part 3 of my electric go-kart build. But first a quick recap. So far we bought an old petrol go-kart, stripped it down and installed a cheap 1kW brushless DC motor and controller. While I had some initial success with this, it wasn't very fast and the chain setup was prone to breaking. So I upgraded to a more powerful motor and smarter controller, and I also had some custom parts made up for a stronger drive system. We had way better results with this setup and got some decent test runs in. However, it wasn't without any problems and there are a few hurdles we're going to try and tackle in this episode. The first problem is the plastic bracketry. Remember how I said it was made out of a really strong plastic? Well, it wasn't that strong. Electric motors can produce a lot of torque. And in our case it was enough to flex our plastic brackets. So much so that the chain misaligned and dropped off. There was nothing really wrong with the bracket shape or size, it was just the wrong material and also had no gussets. A local fabricator made up a 10mm steel bracket with gussets for two boxes of piss. This thing is super strong and I am now confident that there are no longer any weak links in the drive system. The bracket mounts up in exactly the same way as before, using the old mount from the original petrol engine. And, because we didn't change the design, my cables were all the correct length, and could be bolted back onto the motor terminals. The next thing we took care of was the aesthetics. This go-kart was pretty beat up and looked even dodgier than it is. We stripped the bumpers down, and I gave them a scrub with some concrete cleaner I had. Most of the shitty look was just dirt that had built up on it. I bought some plaster bond to have a go at filling in some of the dents and cracks. We put way too much hardener in it and it became unworkable almost immediately, so the result was definitely not the best. I used an orbital sander for most of the sanding. While I was taking care of that, one of the boys repaired a broken bumper mount. Then we just used some cans of matte black spray paint. It was a pretty half assed job, not gonna lie, but it's better than the crusty white bumpers we had before. After that, I printed out my logo, turned it into a stencil, and then painted through it onto the side of the bumpers. Again, not the best result, but it turned out okay. We had terrible weather for weeks, so when it finally dried up enough, we could take it out and give it a test run. This time I wanted to get a look at how the battery pack was behaving under load. And it was just as I suspected, we've got a huge amount of voltage sag that we've got to take care of in some way. Now, the simple answer would be get bigger batteries, but then I wouldn't be learning anything. I wanted to try another experiment, so I did some research on supercapacitors. I wanted to do a primitive hybrid setup, so I ended up ordering 4 balance boards and 24 supercapacitors. These supercaps are AVX branded 2.7V 100 farads. The balance boards take 6 capacitors each, and the onboard circuitry tries to balance the input charging voltage across each super cap, and will not allow it to exceed 27 volts per cap. With the 6 caps in series on this board, we get a total maximum output voltage of 16.2 volts. I've soldered on some charge and jumper leads to make it simple to charge and connect the boards in series. I used XT connectors for easy connection and current rating. To charge, all I did was hook the board up to my power supply with a 1 ohm 100 watt resistor and slowly increase the voltage. You can see the current decreasing as the supercaps charge up. I made a more permanent lead later on that you'll see. So now we need to make a place for the supercaps to sit. I just measured and made up another shelf like the other side with the batteries. I used the same gelve material and cut and bent up a shape that fits. Now because the material was metal, I needed some way to mount the boards so that they won't short out on anything. A friend from work printed me some mounts with his 3D printer that are perfect for this job.
I also put in this thin rubber mat just as a secondary precaution. Here you can see how the boards are mounted to the plastic brackets, which are screwed to the shelf that we made. I made up some more power leads to connect the plus and minus to the controller inputs, and I'm just using red tape to avoid confusing it with the negative when I'm testing. It's all hooked up now, so we can charge each board separately to a suitable voltage. In this case, each board is one fourth of my battery pack voltage, about 14.5 volts. A first test. Solenoid still works. No smoke. Good to go, I reckon. So we took the go kart outside and tested it on a low current setting again. This is just to make sure that the system works and to monitor the voltage levels and behaviour of the capacitors. Put it straight in. This was a pretty mild run, but it's already answered a couple of questions for me. Now one cool thing about supercapacitors is how fast they charge. We could quickly separate the boards and plug the power supply into them and they'd be charged again in less than a minute each. This meant that the battery pack lasted much longer as well. It's also great for testing, meaning we could play around with settings while it charged, then have another go immediately. Here's a couple of videos of the acceleration. The noticeable difference is in the initial momentum, with a nice lurch off the line. The top speed is unchanged and the acceleration is not much different than before, in all honesty. And here's why. This is how far we moved using just the supercapacitors until they drain to below 47 volts, which is my cutoff. To put it simply, they just don't have enough energy density. The boards can handle up to 500 farad supercaps, but they are quite pricey for anything decently branded. I may have to go down the eBay route for testing purposes in the future. So for now, at least I've proved that the concept works and we have a nice strong platform to continue experimenting with. I love the feedback and discussions you guys put up on the last video, so let's keep it going for this one. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and share it round. I will keep improving the go-kart and post up part 4 as soon as I can. Thanks heaps for watching guys, I'll see you again soon.